So guys, good morning everyone. And uh, I want to talk about what uh, Rag chatbots are. <clears throat> what does it mean? Um, this is just uh, a, a, new, a new wave no? that uh, came up uh, after uh, generative AI. The first need of people was that uh, ChatGPT, for example, is very good in replying uh, with the uh, generation, with the text generation, but it replies only about the knowledge inside uh, our databases, you know? And this is a problem for companies when they just want to um, <clears throat> gain, you know, the power of ChatGPT, but replying with contents inside their own knowledge bases. So this is where Rag chatbots came up. Okay. What is a, chat, a Ragbot chat? First of all, we just can analyze the Rag word. It is a retrieval augmented generation. This just means that you can, as I wrote in the main slide, your, you can use your organizational internal data to ask questions. And what you gain is that ChatGPT will reply just as a human. This is the fundamental uh, the fundamental benefit that you that you get with rag chatbot this is a schema of how the rag chatbots work in general you no know, with the two main uh, characters you know the first character is the where the the site you know the workspace administrator the the chatbot designer i can say so the chatbot designer what does it need is to create embeddings but i prefer to use train because it is much simpler to understand because this is what really you want. You just have a knowledge base. You want to train someone, for example, ChatGPT, to reply and, gener and uh, generating replies based on your knowledge base. So what you do is just providing your contents to someone. Let's see who this uh, uh, who is this someone later. No, the next slide. But on the right, we have the, just the perspective of the end user. What the end user gets is uh, um, a human-like uh, um, interaction. He just makes questions in a natural language way. And the system will reply in a natural language way. For example, and this is the, also the, the topic of the, of the live session that we will, uh, we will see later no? at the end of the presentation, the user is asking a, a CV in this case, you know, with some skill inside, but it doesn't have to push any button or select skills from a, um, a list, from a menu. He just ask his question. And the reply, as you can see, is not something that is really got as is from the knowledge base, but it, it is generated by AI, simulating a human-like reply. Because if the user asks, do you have... He just replies, yes. And also he is replying with, uh, for instance, he worked. For instance, in, is not something that was in the original curriculum vitae of, uh, of myself because I uploaded my, my curriculum vitae. So this is the idea no? of how oh, the, the whole scenario of uh, um, content processing works. First, you have here on the left, no? your knowledge base. We are just looking at a technical view no? of, of text processing no? to create uh, the previous kind of interaction. I will go really fast no? because I don't want to be boring. So the, the idea is that you have a, a knowledge base made, for example, of uh, text documents. You just provide those text documents to ChatGPT or in general, any generative AI. No? You can choose whatever you want. We will talk about this later too. What does the, the generative AI is that it creates a vector of your, a semantic vector, or better, a vector into a semantic space of your contents. And this vector, that is something that has a mathematical view, no? so is easy to operate on in a very fast way, is stored into a vector database. The vector database that we use in Taldesk actually is PineCon, that is a cloud vector database, but we are just trying to provide more because we have an open source DNA. So what we want to use as less cloud software as possible for our tool. Anyway, PyCon is very good at the moment. 
So what happens when the user queries? When the user make a question, no? This question is vectorized to. Always asking to the generative AI to create a vector of the question. Now this question is provided to the vector database, but the only thing that the vector database do, that the vector database does, is just a distance calculation between two mathematical vectors. As it is an indexing processing, no? That is very, um, very easy and fast to do, no? So what it finds out is a lot of corresponding text, no? The original text that was processed to create the vector is retrieved, and this is the word, the word retrieving, is retrieved from the index store, the text or the text chunks, because the text sometimes is too long to be processed in a in a in, in, in a wall, no? So it is uh, uh, decoupled into chunks. So these chunks are mounted again, provided back, just like a context to ChatGPT. And now what you do is what you generally do with uh, ChatGPT. You simply create a prompt. That is something made in this way. Hi, ChatGPT. The user is searching, made to me this, this question. Can you please retrieve or better create a reply based on these text chunks that I find out that they're probably very near to the contents that he was searching for? So here it is. The chatbot will reply with yes, for sure. And Obviously, you can set up a lot of things during this prompt generation, you know, because you, you can set up, for example, a system context where you can say in ChatGPT, you are a customer assistant, you know, very good, or you are a scientist, you are very good with mathematics. It depends by the context. So you can tune your reply, you can set up the temperature, so you can add an, an an ex, an, a question mark or exclamation points, also emoticons, whatever you want. It depends by something that you can tune. This is just instead a, a slide that I, that I love because this is just how you can have an, a picture of a vector space. You know? it, it is just a vector, as I told before, into a semantic space. Just imagine that you have a lot of uh, axes, and each axis into this space that is multidimensional. You have uh, the um, axis that talks about fluids, something that talks about work, something that talks about uh, spare time, something that some uh, some axis that talks about mathematics, and a lot of things. So you just put a vector inside the space, and you calculate this distance with a mathematical, pure mathematical approach. And this is very interesting. What uh, I will provide is uh, this presentation later, but you can also um, just check some, some, in, some interesting uh, um, resource. For example, I was looking at these, you know, these results. I provided the link uh, to you, uh, thanks to my colleague Gianluca Lorenzo that provided me all these resources, very interesting. And these uh, resources really explain how generative AI works in general, how embeddings, uh, what is the real revolution of action of transformers into AI that they provided, you know, the, the, the rise of generative AIs, etc. So there are a lot of things, but I should move on, you know. So wh what is the, the um, what is Tidesk doing with uh, Ragbots, you no? Know? Where we are going, we and, and all the and the and all the world. Because the, the 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 issue here is that yes, it's true there are a lot of chatbot tools around. This is uh, this is absolutely a great thing. We, because if you have many competitors, this means that you are in the right on the right wave. But the idea is that there are also a lot, really a lot, of um, development tools around. And, you just have a lot of things to choose and it depends by your needs. The same is happening with chatbots because chatbots are applications, are conversational applications. And you will find 
uh, in, in, the, in the next years, a lot of new development tools that will allow you to work easily with chatbots. Now, the real challenge is to work with chatbot easily because the chatbot is something that is not really flexible by the user interface. And this is good because they come from the chat experience and the chat experience is very easy. You don't need a learning curve to, to, to understand how WhatsApp or Telegram work, no? And this is the same perception that uh, conversational designers have about chatbot design. They want, I can say, not the same experience, no? I, but sometimes, yes, you can, you in the future, you will chat with the chatbot to create another chatbot, for example. This is a no-code approach. And this is what we married, no? From, uh, I can say, uh, the start of uh, 2023. We created our designer. But when you work with chatbots, and especially rugged chatbots, you will face, first of all, th this point, that there are a lot of libraries that the programmer can use to build his own rag chatbot. So everything looks very easy at the start. So it looks like everyone can make his own chatbot, rag chatbot without uh, uh, using a product. But why do you have to use a product or it's better for you to use a product like Tidesk? Because there are a lot of needs behind a chatbot design, especially a rag chatbot because sometimes question and answer is not enough. And as I, as I wrote here, some answers need to follow on an automation path. For example, executing some task, sending some email, invoking some APIs, because you understood that the user is searching for something, for, a, for example, for a special product, and you just to check in your database and see that there is a deal for him. Just to do this check, the rag chatbot is not enough. You need some automation to invoke, no? to query your APIs. There are a lot of other things. For example, you need APIs to use the chatbot. The user interface, the one that Michele shown you before, no? is good to start. But when you are serious no? about feeding the chatbot with your contents, you probably need to look inside your databases. You, you need to look inside your knowledge bases that are really heterogeneous. No? They are sometimes not really accessible. So you need some programmer tools and APIs are there because everything is API first from a lot of time, I can say, no? Automatic retrain is something very good to have because you sometimes just want your contents to be always synchronized with your rug. So everything starts easy, no? You just put your content inside and then you find out that your website is a e-commerce website, and you have a lot of products that move around, some will be updated, some others will be removed from the store. And you don't want to stay behind the user interface to continuously upload and remove or uh, update uh, your content. You just want some automation no? to, uh, to manage this uh, retrain. Something else, something that is really, really important is securing your content. And this is really important when you don't want to simply use the RAG chatbot to provide replies to your uh, website that is a uh, public contents. When your contents are not public, you are, for example, a banking company, you, and you want to use the RAG chatbots to provide support to your, to, to your uh, employers. No? To, uh, this is a, po a really important point because your documents are probably um, um, hidden behind a wall of, uh, of privacy, no? Of, uh, uh, <clears throat> the, there, are, there are a lot of sensible data inside and you just want to secure your content. And this is a really great point, no? It, it, it really hard to achieve. Another point is that just you want to tune your chatbot to reply in the best way because sometimes everything starts easy and you are happy that your chatbot replies, no, like a human. After one month, you just discover that he just is wrong about some replies. For example, he has some hallucinations, some data is missing and you didn't recognize this and you want the chatbot to manage correctly replies when your data is missing. 
no? And this is something that has to do with tuning your chatbot. So just examine one by one and really fast because I want to, to reach the, li the, live, uh, the live session, no? How we manage it to uh, each point. So question answer is not enough. Okay, really easy. You already uh, you have already seen that we have a designer. The designer is where the <clears throat> chatbot program programming happens, and this is the, the main point. You don't have with Tidesk, you don't simply have a rag chatbot that replies to your questions. You have an automation tool. You can do whatever you want. Whatever today is something, tomorrow still more because our tool is going day by day to become more similar to Zapier or make.com, NA10, and other automation tools. Because what you what sometimes happen, happens is that you design your chatbot and you want some automation to occur behind the scenes, no? to create some complex, some, to add some complexity, because we have a complex requirements simply for this. So, Secure your content. This is the, the hardest part, absolutely. No, we are working hard to secure your content. The, 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 the main point no, is when you work with sensible data. And the first thing that you can do is just take Tidesk and host Tidesk on your own web servers. No, on, on your own, I'm sorry, on your own data centers. Okay, Tidesk is open source, so you can do a lot of things, but this is very costly anyway. The main point is, is that if you take Tidesk and install it on your centers, your problem is that your generative AI is ChatGPT. It is in the cloud. This is not a solution because your data always go on ChatGPT. And also if ChatGPT is a trusted environment, you don't trust it. So what do you want really is to have a generative AI environment on your own data centers. And this is what we are working on. We are trying to provide inside the Tidesk stack uh, the possibility to connect directly to a Mistral on-premise generative AI, Lama on-premise generative AI, a lot of open source generative AIs that can replace, and we know that, that, that they are going to replace very good chat GPT. And other, another thing that, that we are doing is just to um, provide uh, um, uh, encryption, encryption at rest of your data, you know, because you upload your documents. You know? And when you upload your documents, we have to secure out your documents to be sure that those documents are not um, violated in some way. This happens when you, you want to use Tidesk in the cloud, because if it is not on-premise and you have Tidesk in the cloud, we have to, to, to take on all those actions you know, to provide the security in the cloud and assure you that your data is really secure. 